Hello, welcome to It's Your Smarter Money with Dr. Laura and Professor Steve. Um, today, we wanted to talk about bonds. Bonds are becoming more and more popular again, and people have questions about that. And so we, we're doing a series of videos on bonds, culminating in an in-person event that we invite you to come to, to uh, hear more about bonds, to better understand why they're important in your portfolio. And there's a particular kind of bond that we, we really like that we wanted to, to discuss today, and that is municipal bonds. Now, municipal bonds, um, some people call them munis, are debt securities issued by government entities, including states, cities, um, and even counties. And they're, um, these bonds are interesting because they offer some advantages, particularly around the tax arena, but they have some other advantages as well. And so we wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I want to mention that they're also issued sometimes by other types of entities, for example, housing projects, uh, schools uh, that have been empowered by, uh, I guess, wherever they're located to issue these types of bonds. And, uh, you know, we'll, and we're going to talk about the two main categories of municipals because it is important to understand it too. Right. I mean, the, it's important to understand that no matter how uh, you look at it, a municipal bond is just like any other fixed instrument. It is essentially providing a loan to a government entity or, or an entity that's been empowered by the government to um, to issue out a school or, the, or those types of things. And so you're loaning money to an organization. And the question is, you know, are you going to get that money back um, in a timely manner? Are you going to get right. the debt um, obligation that they've committed to you? And will you get the entire principal back? And I want to mention... By the way, municipal bonds are typically federal tax-free, and they may or may not be state income tax-free, depending on the, where the municipal bond, where it was issued, and also what state you live in. Uh, and I also want to mention that municipal bonds were uh, given, uh, or I should say municipalities and states were given special um, special ability under the, uh, uh, the, the tax code to issue tax-free bonds. And the reason is that the federal government wanted them to be able to get access to capital at a lower interest rate. And having the ability to issue tax-free bonds enables them to get lower uh, uh, interest rates when they go into the credit markets. And so that's one of the number one advantages of municipal bonds is this special tax consideration. And um, you know it's important to understand that when you have a corporate bond or a treasury, you're not taxed capital gains for that income that you're receiving from them. You're actually taxed at an ordinary income tax rate. For, so for all those people that ran out and bought treasury bonds in their taxable accounts, they're actually getting hit with ordinary income tax. And it really does uh, make provide a tremendous advantage to receive income from an instrument where you don't have to pay taxes. There's a calculation that we use, um, it's called the tax equivalent yield which takes the um, tax-free yield and divides it by one minus the tax rate. And so when we do that equation, we often find, especially if somebody's in the 22%, the 24%, or the even the 37% tax bracket, it really yeah. starts making a big difference. And what's stunning right now, because yields have gone up dramatically over the last three or four years, you know, probably five years ago, the tax code in the yield was around 1%, 1.5%. Uh, right now, we're seeing, uh, you know, we just checked this morning in the 10-year municipal right now, tax code in the yield is well over 6 6% 6 of you are in a 37% bracket, which is astounding, really. Right. And, and that's it nearly a risk-free yield, by the way, I just want to mention, because that yield's based on the, the, the uh, safest municipals rated AAA, so... So it really makes sense for people to start extending their duration out once again and locking in some of those yields because we have reason to believe, I mean, um, it's been discussed at the Federal Reserve that they, they are talking about eventually starting to cut rates. Yeah. And so we may not see these rates uh, last forever. So it yeah. does make a lot of sense. With the inflation report that came out this morning, Apparently, the, uh, the the inflation rate is getting close to the Federal Reserve's target they're claiming. So I, I think there is a possibility they may gradually start to reduce rates next year. Look, it's guesswork, but it's a possibility. And as, as you mentioned, I think I would start to lock in some of these higher yields, potentially. 
Uh, and what one thing you're doing is, you, you know, you're lowering your potential reinvestment risk because you go out one year and, you know, lock something in. Guess what? In a year, the rates have dropped. You have to reinvest that money. And there's a good chance it could be at a lower rate. So. Right. So, so tax savings is the first advantage. The second advantage is that municipals tend to have a higher quality than corporate bonds. Um, historically, yeah. municipals don't um, default as often. Their default rate is significantly less than corporate bonds. Um, I, I want to say since the 1970s, it was something like 0.08% yes. versus the corporate rate, which is somewhere around 7%. Um, so big yep. difference. And so when you invest in a municipal, especially an investment grade municipal, like in a double A or triple A, you can pretty much um, be very comforted in knowing that you're going to get your money. And so it's it's um, almost, almost, we don't want to say a guarantee, but it's um, very likely that uh, everything will be fine. And the other advantage to them is that unlike a corporate um, bond where you really, you have to be diversified with corporate bonds. And so if you only have a few hundred thousand to invest in them, you know, you can only buy smaller chunks so that you you can afford to buy maybe 30 or 40 different corporate bonds issued by different companies. But municipals, because of, because they are so safe and they've had such a low default rate, you could buy larger chunks of municipals and maybe only have four or five or six issues in your portfolio, uh, especially if you stick to the higher credit rating ones you know, A and above. And, you know, the AAA ones, the default rate's been around, it's close to what you said, it's been like around 0.01% over the last 30, 40 years, which is astoundingly low. And in those defaults are actually, there weren't a lot of them. Uh, and those defaults were things that I think anybody who really analyzed them would have been able to say, gee, this is a, this is a, I wouldn't invest in this. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so we've been, I mean, knock on wood, we've never actually um, experienced any defaults in our portfolios and we've been doing this for a long time. Um, and so the other thing that you're bringing up, Steve, in terms of um, the fact that you're able to diversify more in the municipals, um, there are more actual municipal bonds to diversify into. Um, yeah. There's actually 20 times more individual municipal bonds. There's about a million different bonds outstanding, and um, that which there's only a thousand, thousands of corporate bonds. So it's, yes. um, there's a lot more out there to choose from. Um, and uh, I think I read somewhere there's 44,000 different municipal issuers. So Sure. Really, really, uh, you know, a vast environment for us to choose well, from. You look at the issuers, it's, you know, so many towns and uh, counties and, uh, you know, uh, uh, states and also, for example, uh, projects within the states. For example, uh, New, New Jersey Turnpike has issued bonds, municipals. Uh, and, that, you know, that actually, I think that brings to uh, maybe types we should discuss it. Yeah, the two major types of municipal bonds is what are called GOs, that, that's the abbreviation, means general obligation, and there's also revenue municipals. General obligation municipals uh, are backed up by the taxing power of the entity that issues them. For example, a town can tax their residents use, uh, through property taxes. GOs are typically the safest, the safest bonds. Revenue bonds can also be safe depending on the type of project that issues them. So, for example, if it's a critical need, for example, a sewer system or a water project, those th those can be relatively safe. But it's projects that sometimes, uh, for example, a town or a city might decide to build a stadium and that stadium, that project may issue municipals. Those municipals are only are really dependent on the revenue generated by that project. And if that project fails or doesn't generate the revenue that, that's expected, well, there's a chance it could default. So we we avoid those those types of revenue uh, municipals. Right. Although we will use them sometimes, but we want to make sure yep. that the credit worthiness of, of the revenue bond is really um, uh, fully assessed and that we can truly expect to see that revenue stream from that project. And it's so, an essential project. In other words, a sewer system is essential, for example. It's not something like a stadium. It's, very, it's a very different type of, uh, of uh, issuer. Right. Utilities are also. Yeah. Utilities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then what we might not want to invest in so much is is something like a stadium or no. I know even like especially during COVID, um, 
you know, wanted to stay away from things like tollways and airports and convention centers and those types yes. of things that were reliant on people gathering. And once again, you know, you may see yields higher for those types of projects, but look, you know, we've said many times there's no such thing as a free lunch and if some type of municipal is offering a much higher yield than comparable municipals, there, there's there's a reason for it. There's always a reason. And the other thing, by the way, I would I look very carefully at what are called call features, and that enables a municipality or a state or, a, you know, the issuer to call a bond away from you before it matures. And so sometimes you may see higher uh, yields on a callable bond than you'll see on another type of bond. And the reason is because you may suffer a significant risk of, um, of not being able to uh, uh, actually achieve the rate of return you thought you would earn because you, you'll have reinvestment risk. They'll, they'll pull that bond away from you because they can refinance it at a lower rate. And suddenly now you're left, you know, really uh, with cash and possibly you probably now have to reinvest it at a rate lower than, you know, the rate you were expecting on a, a bond that was called from you. So. And we've seen people get pulled into that trap of not fully understanding mm -hmm. that something is callable. And there, there's a reason why uh, you are getting that higher rate. You know, Steve, that actually brings up to the um, concept of pre, pre-refunded bonds Refunding. as well, because um, those those types of bonds that are backed by treasuries or agencies are they're going to be called. They thought of being very yeah. safe, but you're getting a lower yield and um, they're probably going to be callable, right? Well, they will be because what happens with a pre-refunded, uh, the, the entity goes out and says, gee, I can refinance uh, um, my debt at a lower rate, but I can't call it just yet because the, the call dates are, there's specific dates at which a bond can be called. And so the call date hasn't come up yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, send a next uh, issue a second set of bonds and I'm going to use the money from that and buy treasuries. And then what happens is I'm going to hold those treasuries. And then what, so you can buy those bonds and they're very safe because they're backed by those treasuries now. They're pre-refunded. But you know the bond's going to be called when the call date comes up. <clears throat> it, it goes back to that whole understanding what the role is of this particular asset class and what you want it to do. And yep. if in fact, you want to try to lock into some kind of rate that you can rely on, um, you might not want to do that. And Steve, I know you you sometimes like to talk about um, the premium bonds, because we do tend to focus on premium bonds. I don't know yeah. if you want to discuss that. It's almost a technique of actually um, naturally lowering the duration of yep. the bond. And so you're getting, you're kind of getting both of, um, best of both worlds almost, where you can get that yep. uh, so lesser you, you, risk. And the premium bond is where you pay above par. So you may buy a, um, a bond argument's sake with a 6% coupon when current rate, I'm just using, I'm not seeing these at the current rates. I'm just using this as an example. When current rates are 4%, so that bond's going to be selling at a premium because you 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 have a higher coupon. And because of a higher coupon, yet the, although the market's offering 4%, uh, you still have to get only a 4% yield on it. So the price of the bond goes up. But there, there is an issue with premium bonds. You have to watch out for them in a, a environment where interest rates are declining because you could be you could suffer significant reinvestment risk. Whereas a discount bond, there's something which I don't want to get into the technicalities. The yield to maturity is a calculation that tells you to return on a bond. Uh, if, on a discount bond, um, the yield to maturity is actually almost exactly uh, the, uh, the calculation because there's no re reinvestment risk. With a premium bond, there is reinvestment risk because you have very high cash flow on a premium bond because, because part of your coupon payment is, in effect, return of principal you would suffer reinvestment risk of interest rates that are dropping because you now have to reinvest that higher cash flow uh, at a at a rate which is probably lower. So you have to be careful. So bonds are not always simple. And uh, there, there's, a, believe it or not, they're a lot more complicated than people think. <laughs> well, we find even a lot of people that do what we do, um, they, they're mm. afraid to buy individual bonds themselves, yeah. which is why they use uh, fixed income ETFs or mutual yep. funds. And we won't get into that discussion right now, but um, most of you who know us know that um, we don't believe in bond funds. We think that they're often a problem. We much prefer yep. individual bonds. Um, the goal here yeah. really is, of course, yes, you want to try to get the best yield of, the, of a bond that you 
can, but it's also to make sure that you're in a quality, quality investment. You want the stability portion of your portfolio to stay stable. And uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we've been able to achieve with individual bonds and being able to shop for the right pieces. And yep. so, you know, again, most, most of our clients understand the basics on, on bonds, but we want to help you understand a little bit more. Um, we hope you're enjoying these videos to get a little bit more of a sense. And we want to invite you once again to our events that we're holding. We're holding one in Sarasota, Florida um, on January 4th. And that's going to be yep. at the Laurel Oak Club from 5.30 to 7. 5.30 to 8.30. And if you are uh, um, at all interested, please contact us and let us know. We'd be happy for you to attend. And the second is at um, in New Jersey at the William Patterson uh, University, library. the library. Yep. Um, it's in Wayne, New Jersey. And that's going to be held on January 24th from 6 to 8. And yep. so if you have questions about bonds, we um we really hope that you try to attend so that we can answer them for you. So you can feel more confident moving into 2024 because the this is definitely going to be an asset class that you want to hold in your portfolio. More than ever with rates. <laughs> right. So thank you for listening to us. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.